Who's the nastiest dinosaur of them all? He was named the Tyrant Lizard King in 1904, and generations ever since have had little cause to argue about the biggest, scariest meat eater ever, Tyrannosaurus Rex. He's the real life monster from Central Casting, the bloodthirsty villain of scores of movies. T-Rex has become a toy merchant's dream product line. And lately, even an auctioneer's multi-million dollar prize. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, known as Sue. $7,600,000. So what's the source of T-Rex's enduring charm? Seven tons of carnivorous fury. A head the size of a meat locker on a body bigger than a school bus. Dagger teeth as long as railroad spikes capable of ripping off 500 pounds of flesh in a single bite. But two new dinosaurs have been unearthed, which may be even larger and just as deadly. They were cousins who lived half a world away from T-Rex and long before it. They pose the most serious challenge ever to the throne of the Tyrant Lizard King. sense what many adults have long forgotten. That dinosaurs are both monsters of the past and mysteries of the present. Frightening, yet safe. Far back in the past, but still very much alive in their minds. I'd like to buy this. All right, that'll be 950. Even though they've been shrunk, stuffed, and sold by the millions, Dinosaurs hold an enduring source of wonder for the child in all of us. Thanks, have a good day. Thanks. And the bigger and more terrifying the dinosaur, the better. Loving dinosaurs is not the same as knowing them. But once in a while, a young admirer will grow up to be a professional dinosaur hunter. Phil Curry is one who did. He's a paleontologist at the Royal Tyrell Museum in Alberta, Canada, and the world's leading expert on meat-eating dinosaurs. When I was a child, I opened up a cereal box one day and there was a plastic dinosaur inside. And uh, the next thing you know, I was getting my parents to buy cereal like crazy until I could uh, acquire most of the set. Unfortunately, uh, Tyrannosaurus rex was the one I really wanted because one of my friends had it and it was the neat one. But today, T-Rex's reign as king of the meat eaters is in jeopardy. Something Curry knows better than anyone. For almost a century now, the most famous dinosaur has unquestionably been Tyrannosaurus rex. The reason for that is that Tyrannosaurus rex was the largest flesh-eating animal to ever walk the earth, and it conjures up an image of absolute terror. Nevertheless, in the last few years, two new animals have been found in the southern hemisphere, and they threatened to dethrone the king. One of T-Rex's challengers lived in the lush environment of South America nearly 100 million years ago. The other behemoth dominated the river deltas of northern Africa. And until recently, both titans were shrouded in mystery. This is the big jawbone of the uh, skull that we found in place. Paul Sereno is a paleontologist from the University of Chicago. Uh, not only do you see a row of teeth, but you see one just beginning, a fresh tooth, just beginning to emerge here from the socket. In 1995, uh, he plotted an expedition to search for one of T-Rex's challengers in the Sahara Desert. Sereno's expedition would trace the path of European scientists who had discovered a giant dinosaur in North Africa in the early 1900s. Uh, it's a very huge desert, and on this edge, some 40 years ago, uh, French explorers and, and paleontologists, often single-handedly and sometimes by camel, had come across teeth 
of an animal they called and dubbed Carcharodontosaurus. They named the animal for its razor-sharp teeth and because it resembled a much-feared predator of modern-day man. As the name implies, a Carcharodon means uh, shark, and that's also the, the genus name of the, of the great white shark living today. The function of the teeth in general is very clear. They're for slicing. They're vertical blades that would have just come down like a pair of scissors. Uh, they would have started a small hole here, and it would just cut right along when the dinosaur closed its jaws, it would have snapped right through bone and flesh. The explorers boxed up the bones and took them to Germany to be displayed in a museum. But World War II intervened. And in the firestorms of the Great Air War, bombs destroyed the remarkable fossils. The only specimen of the giant and the only possible threat to T. rex's reign was buried by rubble. Following the scientists' old maps, Sereno would carry on their expedition in the rugged mountains of Morocco. His team headed across the desert, searching the sands, but coming up empty-handed. What made it especially tough going, in fact it was physically the toughest expedition I've ever run, was the fact that you were exploring and looking for fossils on the face of a cliff. And your job was to scale that cliff uh, day in and day out in 100 to 120 degree heat uh, uh, and, and basically looking for patches of rock that were exposed that might house the bones of, of animals that uh, we yet really didn't know much about. Under the blazing sun, Sereno lost nearly a pound a day. Weeks had passed and the team had still found nothing. They were in their last days of prospecting on high cliffs when Sereno finally found a piece of skull. And I turned it over and I saw this hollowing and I knew that uh, right away and also by the sort of the structure of the brain case that we were dealing with a predatory dinosaur. And the question was, uh, was this uh, the tail end of a skull that had weathered out millions of years ago, or was this the tip of a skull, the rest of which was in the cliff? Spread out over the cliff face, the team hunted feverishly for matching pieces. We were in the last week of the expedition. Uh, it, was, it, it, it could be a thrilling uh, a finale to our expedition. I found nothing. I came back and I, I puzzled over this bone, almost breathless. I went back up the cliff face and that's when I saw, uh, perched on a, a little pedestal of rock, uh, the, uh, a cut face of bone that matched the piece that I was holding in my hand. It was about 20 feet up. And I scaled back up there and I could fit this piece right on and I knew that the skull was going into the cliff. So can you look at this, have you guys seen the teeth? This is incredible. You know, well preserved there. Cute. What we eventually did was uh, go into the side of the cliff. We had to remove tons of rock over this uh, because the, the skull kept on going in until we could surround the skull and take it down off the cliff. Put the inside. Then this is the right cheek bone with all the teeth in it. And we can see one, two, three, there's a replacing tooth here, four, five, six, seven, eight. As difficult as it was to excavate the skull, it was a bigger problem finding the rest of the animal which was scattered by an ancient river. Uh, what we had was a big river that was transporting lots of uh, bone matter downstream. Most of the time we'd find teeth or small pieces of, of bone broken up and rolled sometimes for as many as 50 miles. We unearthed uh, the animal realizing that it was a big animal but we didn't really know how large. The team was fortunate enough to recover crucial parts of the jaw, including the cheekbone, called the jugal, which would help them estimate the total size of the skull. Back in Chicago, when the team measured the jaw and its components, they discovered that the skull was 15% bigger than the specimens destroyed during World War II. 
back in the laboratory, we began to open up the jackets, and, and by the time we had uh, the, the, the big jaw exposed, uh, we had uh, jaws of other predatory dinosaurs in the laboratory, and it, it just, uh, it was so monstrous compared to these other jaws that we began to realize just, in fact, how big this animal was. I remember calculating one day, uh, once we got uh, the jaw piece and the jugal, and realizing that the skull was, uh, was over five feet long, uh, this was an enormous animal. On the other side of the globe, in Patagonia, Argentina, another dinosaur find would startle the world. This barren ground is rich hunting for dinosaur fossils. The wind constantly blows across these plains, exposing layers of rock 100 million years old. 